I can't remember how many pubs were there, but it was a lot. Uh, James Venture Mulligan opened a pub in Thornborough in the early days. But basically now there's a sign up that says population two and one house that you can see down in the distance, which is probably one of the old homes that was originally standing there. The rest of them had been removed or washed away or burnt. Town was abandoned in the early 1900s after the gold rush. It's like quite a deep creek down there. That'd have played a nice place for detectors, wouldn't it? <laughs> another mine entrance somewhere just close the mine. Of course we're driving through, we're in the Hodgkins and Gold Fields. So there's many many mines right through right through here.
in pretty quickly when they the gold ran out. We've arrived at Thornborough Cemetery. It's very easy to see the headstones here this time. Last time I was here the grass was waist high and I almost felt it was kind of dangerous walking through that length of grass. We walk up here and they've got a nice old turnstile to get in the gate. says on the fence here this cemetery has been maintained annually since 1981 by the Cairns Four Wheel Drive Club Incorporated they do a great job coming out here every year they come here and they also go to Mount Mulligan and keep the cemeteries cut back once a year I came you know earlier in the year and because it, it was wet the grass was waist high and it was crazy but this is, looks really good now We have done a little bit of research on some of these graves here. There's not a lot to be found. I think there's one or two here um, that are buried that were part of the mining disaster at Mount Mulligan, but most of those men are buried in the um, Mount Mulligan Cemetery. one over here looks like a child's grave so we'll go for a little walk over here first and see which one this is in memory of Charles Robert Thomas born 16th of September 1888 died 2nd of October 1918 so it's not actually a child's grave it's just a very small head zone very simple small headstone but effective made by Melrose and Fenwick of Townsville they seem to be the master monumental masons of the time I've seen them carve some very simple stones and I've seen them some very elaborate stones they've done like the one they did for FDA Carstens with the elaborate angel on it in Port Douglas. 
Here comes Dave. He's got the camera out. There's a lot of unmarked graves here and they're simply unmarked because bushfires and what have you would have gone through and they take out the the timber markers, headstones, fences, but you can clearly see mounds in the ground here where there's been graves, but they're unmarked now. I have got the listing of the burials here in Thornborough and it's actually uh, quite extensive. There's been a lot of graves here, but not too many left. This one is NPF Nudstrup. Died 7th of September 1916, aged 69 years and 10 months at rest. Nudstrup kind of sounds Dutch, doesn't it? I'm not Possibly. sure. Could be Dutch. Oh, it says Melrose and Fenwick Cairns. They must have had a a um, business in Cairns as well. This one over here has almost got competing headstones with this ant's nest in the front of it. Wow, what a difference it makes having the grass mow. Doesn't it? Oh, it's so much safer. Yeah, safer, that's for sure. This is um, sacred to the memory of Thomas Eagle. Died 9th of October 1893, aged 56 years. Also, Robert Charles Eagle died 1st of April 1896, aged 67 years. Brothers, possibly. It says in death they are not divided. Also has a rather large anthill in the front. Still got a very nicely intact fence there around it. That's nicely preserved. This is Isabella Taylor. Beautiful daylilies carved into the top of her stone. Often they have a broken day lily, which means a life cut short. In memory of Isabella Taylor, died 7th of February 1885, aged 38 years, though lost to sight to memory dear. That's actually a really nice stone, isn't it, Dave? It's a big stone, isn't it? It's big and heavy, yeah. Well, it stood the test of time anyway. The yeah, cows might have trouble knocking that one over. They might have trouble knocking that one over. Unfortunately, this, this cemetery is actually fenced, so they can't really get in. Whereas up at Kingsborough, they've just got free reign to walk wherever they want. You know, this camera is just on the, on the way out. I can't even see. Yeah, it's doing bad things, isn't it? another one of these cast iron type of stones. It's got all the ivy. It's very intricate but obviously the writing's washed off. It's a beautiful stone. Well it's not even a stone, it's a cast iron memorial I guess. Mm. But obviously we don't know whose it is because all it says is sacred to the memory of and the name's obviously gone. But what a beautiful stone. Grave, grave marker. The vineage around that edge of that always looks like morning glory. Maybe it is morning glory. I was supposed to depict morning glory anyway. Mm. 
Yeah, there is. There is a lot of metal ones here. Um, have a look at this big one. Someone's put a board in to hold it up. Yeah. This is HCW Bulls who died 27th of September 1894, aged 59 years. A precious one from us is gone. The voice we loved is stilled. A place is vacant in our home which never can be filled, erected by his son and widow. That's a really nice stone. Actually, I saw one very similar to this up at um, Port Douglas when we were up there. It was the same market, the same sort of top on it. It's got a little paper wasp nest growing on that board that's helping it stand yeah. up at the moment. There's no one clean compared to a lot of them. A lot of these are really clean here. There is this, one of those stones that uh, uh, Kingsborough is being held up by a piece of timber just like that. Yeah. In fact, that was the one that didn't work. The cattle pushed it over. Yes. This one's sort of leaning in from the cage, at least. The other one was leaning backwards. This is... In loving memory of Emma Evenden, died 16th of July 1888, aged 54 years. Also her grandchild Gertrude Woods died, I think it's the 17th of September 1898, aged two days. Also George Jonathan Evenden died the 23rd of August 1907, aged 77 years. Uh, it says, "'Tis hard to give them up, but thy will, O God, be done." Someone's obviously been here in recent years and put some flowers on the grave here and it looks like it's had a couple of the iron surrounds replaced at some point. This one over here is in loving memory of William Clark, died 20th of December 1909, aged 46 years. Released from sorrow, sin and pain and freed from every care by angels' hands to heaven conveyed to rest forever there. That's a really beautiful big stone too. I can't imagine they would have been cheap, these stones, when they were carved like that. Mm. But I don't understand. Just look at that. Like there's not much space there. No. And look at this field around us. Yeah. Very three people there. Yeah, but I think there would have been so many more graves, but they're just not marked anymore. According to the records, this had a lot of a lot of burials here. So you think they didn't have too much space? Well. Well, I had to open yeah. graveyard, didn't I? So they did have to open another graveyard, and I think, you know... And the other thing was, they didn't actually know that the towns were going to die out. You know, so they were probably expecting even more burials mm, over true. the years, because they did expect the towns to, um, to go on. Yeah. So between 1874 in 1876, prospector James Venture Mulligan led five trips west and south of Maytown. Mulligan reported gold on the Hodgkinson River, which began the Hodgkinson Gold Rush. As the Hodgkinson was mainly a field, a reef field, many prospectors were disappointed as the amount of alluvial gold was limited and Mulligan was blamed. By the end of, the, of 1876, hundreds of prospectors were working on the Hodgkinson and in 1877 the number grew to 1,400. Kingsborough and Thornborough developed 80 kilometres west of Cairns in an isolated area. At the time, the nearest town was Cooktown. Now, I'd have to say that was 80 kilometres as the crow flies because it certainly is further than 80 kilometres to drive here from Cairns, which we did yesterday. It's probably a couple of hours' drive from Cairns. Uh, it says, however, Mulligan owned a, opened a store and a hotel on the corner of Mulligan and McLeod Streets in Thornborough. And soon there were many other hotels and stores of all kinds through Kingsborough and, 
and Thornborough, four miles to the east. In 1874, Selheim wrote, to this place there is a good dray road and a township is springing up rapidly. There can be little doubt that it will be a place of some importance of some, for some time to come. What well, turned out it was only of some importance for a few years because, you know, 1875, 1876 and the gold rush was here in full swing. People were moving here by the droves. Obviously, cemeteries had to happen because towns were here. Um, but really... It was all over and done with by, you know, the early 1920s and probably earlier than that, but there was some still some stragglers in the towns later. Um, but, you know, many of those people that were living in the, the towns out here are obviously buried in these cemeteries. There's no current burials here. I think the most current burials were... Um, Possibly a couple of these graves, which are the Cummings graves. I'll just go in and have a look. Um, yeah, 1962. Um, this grave here of Robert Charles Cummings. So I think that's probably one of the newest graves here. And that one next to it is 1927, Victor Cummings. Oh, it says here... Victor Cummings killed at the Mount Mulligan coal mine, aged, oh, in, on the 8th of 2nd, 1939, aged 20 years and 3 months. So that was actually well and truly after the first mine disaster, which killed 75 men, which was in 1921. It also says Christopher Cummings died 7th of January 1927. And then the last one here, I think it's actually 1952, died aged 85 years. And Robert Cummings died in 1928, aged 60 years. So this is obviously a family plot here that I'm standing in. So this one says, let's see if I can get up nice and close. says sacred to the memory of William Smith who died at Thornborough 17th uh, 1879 in loving remembrance of our dear daughter Christina Cummins who died December 12th 1896 aged 24 years and eight months God's will be done and then the one at the back which is quite a large one has the IHS on top so it would be a Catholic grave. In loving memory of Joseph Cummings, died 14th of August 1911, aged 72 years, and Anne Cummings died 27th of November 1916, aged 76 years. Lord, all pitying Jesus blessed and grant them eternal rest. Something you don't see very often, there's a motorbike going past on the road. You don't see a lot of traffic out this way, that's for sure. Also their son, on the side here, it says, Also their son, William Edward Cummings, died 15th of August 1917, aged 49 years. That's a beautiful headstone. There's another couple of those iron headstones here that don't really... Yeah, it's a shame because you have no idea who they belong to, but they're so attractive to look at. Just walk over here and have a look at these few that are all together. This one is Elizabeth Croft, born Sheffield, England, died at Thornborough, 23rd of August, 1881, aged 42 years. So she would have emigrated on one of those early ships the pioneers came out on, which would have been a very difficult journey, I would imagine. 
a difficult journey and then coming to a very difficult place. This one here, loving memory of Willie Clark, died 21st of January, 1895, age seven months. Also, Beatrice May Clark, died 6th of February, 1904, three months. Yeah, it was difficult for these children to survive. It's an outline of a grave here with a bit of a, a piece of concrete in the top, but it's very, it obviously has no real marker, but the bricks are very old, so it's one of the very old graves, I would imagine. Over the back here we've got in remembrance of Eliza, beloved wife of Henry Fryer, who departed this life, 16th of February, 1913. It says, long days and nights she bore her pain, to give her ease was all in vain. But God alone, who knew it best, did ease her pain and give her rest. Erected by her loving husband and family. She must have been unwell and in a lot of pain by the sounds of that. Hmm. It's quite a big grave stone, this one, because it's got this big concrete surround around it. Now it really came down to, I guess, the burials would have come down to what each family could afford because I really don't think these gravestones would have been cheap. This one here, all we've got left is a surround. Possibly a wooden grave marker that's been burnt. There must have been a few trail bike riders up this way because we're seeing a few of them go past at the moment. This one's over here all alone. Okay, it says, in memory of John White, born at Omar, Omar maybe, County Tyrone Island, died at Thornborough, 25th of February 1903, aged 64 years. And it's got a few of those um, tiles around there. They look like they're terracotta. There seem to be quite a few of these old graves that had these terracotta tiles marking the edges of them. We'll walk over here and have a look at what Dave's looking at. Seems to be the whole centre part, there's all these graves at the front. And then the whole centre part of this cemetery, there's obviously a lot of graves here but they're all unmarked now. There's one single grave up there, which I can try and zoom in on. It's an iron marker, so it's no point going up to read it because we won't be able to. But then we've got all these other ones that are across here where Dave's over there having a look. So we'll walk over there and see what he's looking at. it's not too hot today it is warm but it's not overly hot and it's not very humid so it makes the trip quite nice found anything interesting oh the mother that yes I remember this one. This is in loving memory of Michael and Joseph Murphy, aged 17 months, died in 1899. Oh, Michael and Joseph, maybe they were twins. Elizabeth died 1902, aged 11. Kathleen, 1906, aged 7 months. Francis died 1910, aged 3 years and 6 months. No space of time, no lapse of years can dim our darling's past. A loving memory holds it dear, affection holds it fast, erected by their loving mother. 
What mother deserves to go through that, eh? I'm losing one, two, three, four, five of her children. I actually did look these people up. I don't know how many kids there actually were. They must have yeah. been all those children. It's funny it's... that there's no father or anything mentioned on there. Um, maybe he'd passed as well. It's really hard to say, but it's very um, sad. I did look those people up, but I couldn't find any information on Trove or anything about that family. Yeah. This one looks like it's not that... It's been broken, but not that long ago. 1902. Yeah, 1902. Mary okay. Quill and Patrick Quill. Yeah. 1906 may their souls united through the mercy of God it doesn't really make sense does it may their souls united through the mercy of God rest in peace it's like they've left a word off there like no. be you know but they did talk differently back then look at that one over there with the the surround but the headstones fallen in oh. Get up close and see if I can see who this is. Okay, it's Joseph Kavanagh, uh, who died on the 8th of September 1909, aged 46 years. And that's all it says on there. Oh, RIP at the bottom. Now, all of these people, most of these people came from Ireland. Yeah, there was a lot from Ireland here, wasn't there? I did notice that. There was one over there from Sheffield, England, but I've seen a lot of them from Ireland there's one there look at this one it's just wooden surrounds now nothing left but if you look across the if you look across the cemetery you can definitely see the mounds where the headstones used to be like if you look across here see how there's mounds in the ground I was walking over there and I could see all of these mounds where obviously headstones have been in the past Couple of big headstones here, obviously a family plot. Okay, it says In loving memory of Mary Ann, the beloved wife of F. H. Guilas, died twenty third of january nineteen oh nine, aged forty two years, gone but not forgotten. Also Francis Henry Guilas, aged twenty died twenty fourth of february nineteen sixteen, aged fifty five years. Rest in peace. Then this one says here. got the hands um, the clasped hands at the top and it says in loving memory of Leopold Henry beloved father of FH Guilas died 3rd of September 1897 aged 63 years also Edith Mary beloved child of FH and MA Guilas died 23rd of August 1899 aged three years so yeah, there's a lot of children in this cemetery, a lot of young children. Yes. You know, diphtheria. They didn't have any way of saving them. Um, typhoid, diphtheria, all these things. Snake bites. Snake bites. Oh. Just probably the common flu. I did a little bit of um, research on this one for Patrick Rowan. It says, sacred to the memory of Patrick Rowan, 19 September 1894, aged 54 years. A precious one is gone, from us is gone, a voice we loved is still, directed by his wife and children. Now I did a little bit of research on him and I didn't find out very much other than the fact he came out of one of the early ships. Um, can't quite remember the name of it now, but I do have it in my notes at home. There's a lot of grave markers in there that obviously are from the... See all those grave marks? They'd be from yeah. the unmarked graves. Down at the base of that one. Probably when they clean it up, they put them in there so they don't hit them with the mowers.
this one's a really cool epitaph on this one. In remembrance of my dearly beloved husband, James Marr, native of Bernafia, Kilkenny Island, who died the 2nd of March, 1886, aged 35 years. Forget him, exclamation mark. No, and never will. We loved him here, we love him still. Nor love him less, although he's gone from us to his eternal home. That's really cool, isn't it? Yes. You sort of imagine them saying, forget him. No, we never will. You know? Ma, that's a real Irish name. From, from Kilkenny. And from Kilkenny, obviously. Very Irish. There's, um... I think there's one over at, uh, at the other cemetery there was. I did find one here, um, killed at Mount Mulligan, but it wasn't in the disaster. It was killed. He was killed in 1939 at Mount Mulligan, right. over there, one of the Cummings family. So, yeah. The, um, did I look at that one over there in the corner? Oh, look at that! Is that an anthill or is it a headstone? I think it's on the outside of the fence. Look at this one. This is that one that I zoomed in on earlier. Literally has nothing on it anymore. Which is a real shame. I'm not sure, quite sure how they used to, whether they used to paint them or what to put the names on them, but they're no longer here anyway. So that's probably an overview of who's here at Thornborough, Queensland, far north Queensland. So we'll head off and have a look at Mount Mulligan now. Have a look at the cemetery there, mainly made up of the men from the mine disaster in 1921.